Australia is home to 170 species of sharks. About 50 of them inhabit the highly diverse Queensland coast. All along the coast from Cairns through to the Gold Coast, there are shark control program equipment placed on the beaches of each city. These include nets and drum lines, making approximately 530 drum lines and 28 nets along the coast of Queensland. Nets intend to catch and kill sharks over 3 metres that inhabit the area and pass through whilst feeding, although a lot of other species are caught in these nets, some of which include turtles, rays, dolphins, whales and a few other harmless species. Nets are approximately 186 metres long and made out of mesh. It's held in the sand by a high holding powered anchor. Drum lines are used to kill sharks by capturing them on large baited hooks suspended by a large buoy. The buoy is then connected to two floats 3 metres apart, all attached by a float rope, which also has a 10 kilo anchor. These methods are aimed to capture and kill potentially harmful sharks in the area or ones being lured in by fresh natural bait to decrease the number of deaths by shark attacks. Sharks have kept our oceans healthy for over 400 million years. They keep the ecosystem in balance, allowing the oceans to regulate the production of oxygen, food, and the removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. They are our ocean's apex predators, occupying the top of the food web, meaning if there was a population decline or extinction, the whole ecosystem would crumble. Tertiary consumers such as marlins and tuna would overpopulate because they have no other predators. It could also trigger the loss of smaller fish and shellfish due to the overexposure of predators that are overpopulating the oceans, meaning a downfall in fisheries and commercial businesses that bring food to our local stores. North Queensland's reefs would suffer damages as algae overpopulates, crippling the tourism industry. The decline in sharks on Queensland's coast may have unlimited repercussions. If we want to preserve what's left of their ecosystem, there needs to be alternatives to shark culling. Just over a hundred years ago, people in the world weren't even sure that sharks could be so fatal to humans. The movie Jaws was released just after that belief was disproved. This is from a string of five shark attacks in 12 days in the United States in the East Coast. Movies, documentaries, shows such as Shark Week and news reporting have placed fear in the people about these apex predators. Let's take a look at some statistics. Worldwide in 2015, there was the highest number of shark attacks documented in history with six of them being fatal. The number of shark attacks had been rising for quite a few years. The most common species of sharks to attack humans is the tiger shark, bull shark, or the great white shark. Your odds of being struck by lightning or experiencing a fatal car crash are far higher than ever accounting a shark in the ocean. In Queensland, in the 2015 spike year, there were four shark attacks with none of them being fatal. However, in response to a spike in shark fatalities over the past few years, the Western Australian government introduced a policy to attempt to reduce the threat of shark attacks, which involves the catching and killing of large sharks. This can be off the coast, near some of the state's popular beaches. Under this policy, drum lines are set off the coast about one kilometre. They have baited hooks, nets and long lines in designated marine monitored areas. When any great white, tiger shark or bull shark, larger than three metres is caught, it will be shot. Sharks less than three metres, as well as other marine animals caught on the hooks, will be set free if they are not severely injured. If the hook injuries are too severe to threaten their survival, these animals will also be killed. Normally a permit to harm protected wildlife under the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act must be obtained prior to killing any protected wildlife. However, in this case, the Western Australian Government has been granted an exemption from gaining this permit by the Federal Environment Minister. In both Queensland and New South Wales, a full assessment had to be performed before a permit to harm protected species of sharks was issued. In 2014, in Queensland alone, 667 sharks, including endangered species such as the Great White and the Grey Nurse, were killed according to figures from the Fisheries Department. As of December 2013, there were 369 drum lines and 30 nets deployed off the coast of Queensland, mostly near swimming beaches, including our local Alexandria headlands. The program has grown steadily since it began and now extends to Cairns across a total of 10 regional areas. Since the culling programs have been in place, shark-related fatalities in Queensland have declined in both areas with and without drum lines with the steepest rates of decline before commencement of the program.
the effectiveness is difficult to evaluate as the rates of attacks before and after the program started are both very low. Moreover, 83% of drumlines are deployed at locations where a fatal attack has never occurred. The ecological cost of a drumline is high, with 97% of sharks caught since 2001 considered to be at some level of conservation risk, and 89% caught in the areas where no fatal attacks occurred. Other issues and controversies with the shark calling programs include the inhumane aspect of it and the uncertainty of a declining shark population. Sharks that get hooked may be on a hook for hours up to a full day and drown or bleed out before a designated boat comes to euthanize the animal. That goes for any animal that is so unlucky to get caught. Alternatives to the call already exist and are being employed or under development. Surf lifesavers monitor the popular beaches around the country during surf lifesaving season. They have excellent programs that provide detection and education. Aerial spotting with helicopters and light planes also works effectively for popular beaches. A program has also been developed on social media platform Twitter where tagged sharks tweet their location as they swim past underwater detectors. This is a good way for detecting sharks and studying their movement patterns across the coast. In addition, researchers funded by the Western Australian government are also looking into predicting shark sightings through environmental patterns using strobe lights and bubble curtains and detecting sharks using sonar. Many of these methods improve our knowledge on sharks and since many of these magnificent creatures are under threat, findings aid in conservation efforts as well. Sharks are apex predators, that much is true. They are slow growing, mature later in life and have a lower rate of reproduction. And this therefore means they have little protection from culling or harvesting. But did you know they have a profound effect on the rest of the food web? There is a phenomenon called mesopredator release where the top trophic level predator is removed either by culling or harvesting or some other reason and subsequent level species populations will explode. This very phenomenon can be seen with the removal of sharks on coral reefs and the knock-on effect this has on the rest of the animal populations. For example, smaller predatory fish such as coral trout that feed on damselfish and other like species will increase in numbers exponentially. If the government continues with their current strategies, all manner of sharks could eventually die out. Because sharks are apex predators, they have a responsibility as such to maintain the balance of the ecosystem they live in by keeping subsequent animal populations in check. Shark culls kill dangerous sharks, yes, but they also kill threatened and endangered species, which could eventually be detrimental to the survival of those local populations. The other shark control methods, such as nets and baited drum lines, are expensive to maintain, time consuming to check and deploy, and often catch non-target species such as turtles and dolphins. But, there are new and innovative ways to combat shark attacks that are being developed. This can be the use of drones and shark deterrents, such as Shark Shield and Clever Boy, which are far more cost effective and easier to use. As new ways to detect and deter sharks are being introduced, they must be tested and proven first, before being introduced to the public or for government use. That's why only minor changes can be made to the current strategies. In New South Wales, the shark nets are lifted for the whale migrating season each year, and Queensland could do the same, to reduce the number of non-target species being caught. Another possible change could be to reduce the number of culls occurring and the number of sharks and shark species being killed on those culls. Even though if minor changes are introduced, it could help local shark populations to increase slightly whilst the new shark deterrents and detectors are being tested and regulated. As stated previously, there are new and innovative ways to combat shark attacks, and these are easier to run and more cost effective. This can reduce the amount of nets and drumlines being used, as well as the culls being conducted, allowing local shark populations to bounce back. Shark Shield is a personal lightweight device that is attached to both ends of a surface board, which emits an electrical field that is harmless to both humans and sharks. It deters the sharks because the electrical field emitted is picked up by the sensitive receptors in the shark's snout, causing subsequent discomfort and the shark will swim away. Drones are another innovative way to help lower the risk of shark attacks. They can autonomously be flown over the water, 
and if a shark is detected by the sensor, real-time video will be relayed back to the relevant beach authorities, such as the lifeguards on duty. If a combination of both personal shark deterrents and beach-wide shark detectors are used, the risk of shark attacks could be reduced significantly, making it cheaper for the government, less nets, culls and drumlines. This is better for the environment and safer for both beachgoers and the sharks themselves. With everything you've heard today, we hope your understanding of shark culling has heightened. With the media instilling fear into the population, it becomes a tricky subject to tackle. When it is statistically more dangerous to walk during a lightning storm or hop into your car and go for a drive, it seems barbaric to kill sharks at the rate us Australians do. Since the culling programs were installed, shark-related fatalities have reduced in areas that have drum lines and areas without. However, it is difficult to say it's entirely accurate due to the steepest part of their decline being from before these drum lines have been put into effect. Shark culling isn't only an issue because it's unethical. Sharks play a vital role on the ecosystem by keeping other animal populations in check. We need to start seriously considering alternatives to the shark situation, because sharks are slow growing and they mature later in life resulting in having a lower rate of reproduction. While people are battling the government every day to introduce better options, it takes time, so for now we must consider doing everything we can before alternatives are offered full time to the government and to the public. Some things Queensland can do is to raise the nets during migrating season, and the whole of Australia can look over their shark culling techniques and kill less sharks and perform less culls. We should focus on the new technology steadily becoming available, such as drones and shark shields. Alternatives aren't only positive in the sense that less sharks will be pointlessly killed. They are good for the economy, costing less and using less manpower, which opens more hands and funds to put towards the conservation of endangered sharks and the economy. We hope you agree with us that drum lines and nets aren't going to be the most effective way anymore. It is important to protect our sharks. This is a massive problem in Australia and it needs to be addressed. Every hand and every voice will help endeavour us in the right direction. Thank you for listening.